welcome home church. Welcome to Lightcast Church Sunday celebration. And why don't so why don't we welcome one another? Say hi, hello to your seatmates. Wave. If you are online, make sure that you are pressing that like button, heart button. Comment down below. Say hi to everyone. Amen and amen. Because we are truly blessed. That's why we celebrate, amen? We are happy. We don't come here sad with the sad faces. We are already blessed. That's why we are here to bless God and to bless one another. Last, uh, last Thursday and Friday, it was full pack. It was a very busy day for most of our, uh, for us, for me and pastor and our staff, we attended the training with Bishop Ariel Baliano. And one thing that stuck to me is the word self-discipline. Amen. And we really need to be disciplined in our lives and the importance also of mentoring. So church, if you don't have anyone who is mentoring you, okay, if there's anyone who's mentoring you, um, it is very important, especially that we are um, in a supernatural business wherein it is, we really need the help of the Holy Spirit and also that we need the help of someone to, to mentor us. Amen? Amen? So let's all pray, church. Are we ready to worship God? Amen. Because this time it's all about Him, it's all for Him. And I pray that our hearts are ready to really worship Him today. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you. Compared to your greatness, to get, to comp compared to your glory, Lord God, we are nothing but a tiniest dot. But thank you, Father God, for giving us that privilege that we can come before you and worship you, Lord God, and enjoy you, Lord such a privilege lord god and i pray that today as we do that we're not going to miss anything cleanse our hearts and our minds because truly it's all about you yes. that from the beginning of the worship until the end and even as we step outside lord may you be glorified alone so lord accept our worship may we worship you in spirit and in truth we give you all the glory and all the praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, let all stand. The Bible says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. Are we going to do that, church? Amen. Amen right? And yes. I will sing praises to my God while I have my own being. So church, are you ready to worship God through music? Amen. And let's give the Lord God praise. Let's give him the best clap offering. Let's magnify the Lord. He's most worthy to be praised. Amen. And amen. We declare that we believe in the Lord. I believe in the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow I believe in the power of the gospel so makes the broken whole I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone I believe I believe I believe as I bow before you Lord I will rise in confidence I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. Yes, Lord. No matter where I go, and no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. Start falling. When we fall down on our knees, I believe that the lame will go walking and 
Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness that the light has come. Amen. And sing it to the nations. Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the mothers. Sing it to the daughters. To every generation.
isn't that isn't that song great from one generation to the next that's the Lord God is going to be our God and we pray we keep on praying that the Lord will be known by our families right our families our children right now and our grandchildren and the generations to come that the Lord will remain the Lord of our family the Lord of this church the Lord of our spiritual family that we will always be be standing for Jesus because of the things that the Lord has done for us amen Lord thank you dear father God you are our shepherd, Lord God, and we shall not want. Thank you, dear Father, that you love us so much, Lord, that you plan, Lord God, good, pleasing, and perfect will, Lord God, for your children. But also, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that we will be obedient, Lord, that we will trust you, and that we will obey you, Lord. For indeed, Lord God, there is no other way to be happy, Lord, in Jesus, but to trust and to obey. And so, Lord God, today we ask, Lord God, that you touch our hearts, Lord. And Lord God, bring us to your Father, Lord God, to realize that you are the best, Lord. That nothing can compare, Lord God, to you. And we may, Lord God, have good things, Lord God, on earth, Lord, but nothing can compare, Lord God, to your goodness because, Lord, you yourself are a good, good Father. We worship you, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, teach us, Lord, to obey. You have always been a faithful father, love has drawn me in. As your child, so I'm trusting you with all of my desires, all of my desires. I'm back.
bow down to you, Lord. I'm bowing to your sovereignty. And when my failing flesh is tempting me to stray, oh, teach me. Teach me to. dear father god um, for the example lord god of the lord jesus christ lord may we be obedient lord god to your will lord may we listen to you lord god may we just enjoy your presence lord god all the more lord may we cling to your words dear father lord may we seek you lord god first before everything else lord may we trust you lord god Trust, Lord, that everything, Lord God, that you have planned, Lord God, is for our good. Not for harm, Lord God, but for our good, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that we will see in faith, Lord God, that when you see and when you reveal something to us, Lord God, that we will not question, Lord, but we will obey you, Lord God. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit who convicts us, Lord God, and guides us and teaches us, us, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the Lord Jesus, for his teachings, Lord God, that we read, Lord God, in his word. Lord, all the things that you have done, Lord, we pray, Lord God, and we consider, Lord God, not to forget, Lord, but to treasure, Lord God, that we may be more and more lord like the lord jesus christ and all the more lord god be effective also lord god to win others lord god because they will see you lord in our lives lord it says lord god that when you are lifted high lord that when you are lifted above all lord god you will draw people lord god into yourself so lord we declare this and we claim it lord god from one generation, Lord, to the next, that you will be our God and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. Oh, you be seated, church. <laughs> Amen. Right? The second song um, says, teach us to obey. And as we move forward to the next part of our service, Lord, teach us to obey, to give to you. Amen? Why? It is because there is joy in giving. It says in Proverbs 11, 24 to 25, I will read it to you, church. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Amen, church. I just want to encourage you and exhort or encourage you um, in terms of giving to the Lord. Because I praise God that he taught me as young as when I was 16 years old. That he taught me to give. Even if I don't work during the time I hadn't had any means of earning my own money. But God had taught me to give. And go, going forward, when I moved here to the States in California, I started earning a lot because I used to work as a medical technologist. And then when I moved here to New York, the Lord called me to be in full-time ministry. So that means no money to be earned, right? But you know what, church? God had never failed me. Praise God that he taught me to give as such a, in such a young age. And up until now, you have seen most of you here were, uh, were with, with us, with my family. And you've seen how the Lord had really taught us through the years. And praise God that until now, that he had taught us, taught me personally to give. And um, I love this saying. I heard this to pastor. Give when it hurts. Give until hurts and give until it doesn't hurt 
anymore. Amen, church? So are you ready to give? And we, church, we are giving to the ever faithful God where whom you cannot outgive this God. So when you give faithfully today with the right amount, with the right heart, don't be surprised that tomorrow, next week, in two years, ten years, it will come back to you outpouring that you will never have enough to carry all the blessings. Are you ready, church? Okay, so let's all stand. We're going to sing and praise because truly it is joyful to give to the Lord. Amen. everything. Lord, we give a portion of what we have and we ask you to receive it and we ask you to bless it. Father God, thank you for all the blessings that you have allow you are allowing for us to enjoy and to have. And also even the ability to work, to make money, Lord God, these things are all from you. So Father God, may you find us faithful for the rest of our lives as we give faithfully to you with a cheerful heart. I pray that this money will not only to sustain this church like cast, but as church, it will be a blessing, Lord God, to many churches around us, even to different parts of the world, and also to reach the lost and give hope to them through the Lord Je in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can now be seated again. And church, it's a privilege to introduce this couple because I've, I've known this couple when they were still singles. So they were not together yet. They are not a couple, a married couple yet. And I've seen how they grow in their faith, in their relationship with God, with each other. Yes, with each other <laughs> and with other people. And I truly, it's a privilege and a great blessing to introduce them and to hear a wonderful story that God had allowed them to experience. So without further ado, let's all clap our hands and welcome Coach Jomar and Pastora, not yet, okay, Sister Mara Panganiba. All right, um, good morning once again. So uh, my name is Jomar. As you all know, I'm one of the primary leaders here at the church and the one and only Tambay sa primary. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, um, they always say that um, behind a uh, man's succe success is a very strong woman. So in my case, 
behind the success of my tambaying uh, is a very supported wife. <laughs> Supporting wife? So let, uh, this is my wife, by the way. Clara, <laughs> say hi, good morning, say good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so um, we are here today to give our testimony about how, about God's provision in our lives. So as you all know, if you have been with us since last year, we started this, our church, you know, started this campaign called The Building Blocks. And where the purpose of this campaign is for us to be able to raise funds, you know, in order to help our church and sustain the rent for our building for the next 10 months. And... Each block, you know, each block is worth a thousand dollars, and I know that a thousand dollars is a lot of money for all of us, diba? So during that time, in my back of my mind, I was like thinking, "Oh Lord, thank you for those people who is going to pledge. To pledge, God bless their life, and may you continue to bless them more." And that's that's what. Uh, Basically, what I'm trying to say, I'm not, I'm not gonna pledge because it's too much. So little did I know that God will also speak in my heart to be able to pledge to help our church out. So here comes the Holy Spirit through Pastor Ron. <laughs> so one day he gathered us, staff. You know, we were in a meeting, I remember that day. And he told us, you know, he told us, he encouraged us. You know, he was encouraging us to support and participate in the work that God is doing in our church. And do you believe that we are here in this place because God has a purpose for all of us? Yeah. And one of that purpose is, of course, to win this community back to Him. Do you believe in that? Amen. If you don't believe in that, I'm going to transfer to the Korean church. Yeah. And it's a good thing we're on the same page. Okay? And, you know, Pastor Ron encouraged us you know, to treat this campaign you know, as an investment, you know, as an investment for the expansion of his kingdom. And, and he, so, he also told us, you know, to pray about it, give it to the Lord, and what, whatever amount that the Lord is going to reveal to us, then that is the amount that we are going to pledge. Yeah, so, prayer. Yeah, so, as you all know, probably for those of you who knows me already, I already probably mentioned this to you, that I don't really like to pray for something very specific to the Lord. Right? If, especially when I'm involved in doing the work. You know why? Because the Lord God answers my prayer to something that I don't want to do. <laughs> so I get scared. Lord, are you sure this is what you want me to do? You know, I always want the, I always want to run the opposite way. You know, but I've learned that disobedience is, is not the way. You know? So that's why I obey the Lord. And even if I don't want to pray, you know, the Holy Spirit is convicting me to pray. So, walang kawala. I can't really run away. Right? So, um, so, the Lord God, you know, has put into my heart, you know, to pledge 10 blocks. <laughs> 10 blocks? Lord, sure ga. And during this time, you know, it was like a very weird feeling. Because in a way, I was... There's like excitement and enjoyment in my heart. And I was like, why am I so excited? I'm giving away 10 blocks. <laughs> but then of course, that's kind of weird. But because probably it is the Lord God who talked to me. And I know that this is going to be an investment for His kingdom. So I was like, okay, Lord, let's go. So, and at the same time, I was scared. You know why I'm scared? Because during that time when I decided to follow God and to commit myself to full-time ministry, you know, in terms of my finance, I always leave it to faith. <laughs> so, I even mean, um, whatever I get from the church or whatever love gift that I get, that's, that's it, right? So, I have learned to be content or be a base. I've learned to be content. Yeah. So, to make sure that it is the Holy Spirit and who is really speaking in me. And I had to call the second Holy Spirit. <laughs> I had to call her, you know, for confirmation because she's my wife, you know, we're married, we're already one. Yeah. So we, we always make the she decisions together. Kiss down. <laughs> so we always 
always have to make decisions together, right? That's, that's marriage. So, you know, whatever is hers is mine, as whatever is mine is mine. Right? I mean, husband. <laughs> no kidding aside, whatever is hers is mine, as whatever is mine is hers. In short, dogisha. <laughs> so, you know, so I was so excited. You know, so I called her, I called her. So I was like, I called her, I was like, so I did call her, I was like, ring, ring, ring. And then she, she picks up. So you go ahead, you have a mic. Your turn. <laughs> so yeah, so he, he called me um, and you know, he was telling me about you know, how he wants to pledge 10 blocks on the, uh, the building blocks campaign. And um, so he was asking me like, how much are you willing to give? And really, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't know, a hundred dollars. He no, called me off guard. He called me off guard. And the <laughs> so pledge to a thousand. Like a hundred dollars. Because in the back of my mind, I was, I, I was in the back of my mind, I was thinking like, you know, uh, like he mentioned, you know, ten, ten blocks is a lot. <laughs> so I didn't want to give. I didn't want to pledge ten blocks. So you know, uh, <laughs> so he got really upset. <laughs> he got really upset with my response, and um, you know, so mind you, I was at work, so we started fighting over the phone. <laughs> we started fighting. <laughs> so you know, going back and forth, but in the end, you know, he already told me that um, you know he's gonna hang up the phone, and to uh, <laughs> he's gonna hang up the phone and to pray about it. Yeah. So I did <laughs> hang up the phone. I was like, okay, bye, pray about it. Okay. <laughs> That's what I did. But then, of course, I was so frustrated, you know. I, I remember the time I was like in the balcony, you know, I was in the balcony. You know, so I was having my moment. And I was like, you know, talking to the Lord. No, actually, I always do that sometimes, you know, if I feel afraid. Or not, some, if I always have something to say to the Lord, I always find my time, you know, to speak to Him. So I was like in the balcony, I was like talking to the Lord. I was like venting out, Lord, bakit ganon? Why is it like that? I thought we have the same Holy Spirit, me and her. <laughs> Probably she has a different spirit, you know? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so I was really praying. I was like venting out. Why is it that? But then again, of course, I, I was reminded by his word to humble myself before him and to trust in him. So I was like, okay, Lord, if I won't be able, if I'm, she's not going to participate with me in this, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it on my own, Lord. Because you have told me so. You have told me so, so I was like in the balcony, I was just appreciating again the, his creation, his love for me and all of that. So, you know, I was like there, I don't know how long I was there, but probably for 30 minutes because I was just like appreciating the Lord. I was like praising him and praying, you know, and then suddenly I got the call back. Yeah, and then the, my phone was like, ring, ring, ring. Why is she calling me back? <laughs> so she did call me back and this is what she said. So, yeah, so I called him back and, um, you know, um, I thought about, you know, what we were talking about and I prayed about it. Um, so I told him what the Lord has, uh, has, you know, has impressed to me. And I told him that he impressed to me to pledge 12 blocks. Yeah, 12 <laughs> blocks. And my heart started to jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I was like, I was like. Thinking that, of course, the ho I think the Holy Spirit is more powerful in her. <laughs> because mine only told me 10 blocks. She, she has 12, so I trust her Holy Spirit for that 12 blocks, you know? So, yeah, and then we have decided to give 12 blocks. 12 blocks. Yeah, yeah and so you continue. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, so we pledged the 12 blocks. So, you know, we started giving our um, pledge faithfully each month. And, and then know, we were thinking about, oh, how, how is how it's gonna go with our finances and all of that. But during this time, you know, we never really felt that we are lacking, you know, in terms of our finance. And sometimes, you know, we even treat people out. Because my friends here, don't <laughs> <laughs> Right? Right, but. Of course, you know, um, we, we're not lacking. And, you know, the Lord God is really faithful through all that, you know. And go ahead. The, uh, we give every month. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, so we were giving every month uh, faithfully. So after the, um, when we were in the last, the second to the last month of our um, giving, giving um, so we decided to give our last two remaining blocks uh, yes. for one month so that, you know, just, so that we yeah, can so be done we, with it. We can have <laughs> savings again. And we were so relieved. <laughs> we're finally done. We're finished with our pledge. Finally, we can have savings again. 
Yeah, and so then suddenly, you know, we I don't I don't really check our mail. We don't we don't really check our mails because most of it are just junk mail <laughs> from my Lola. So and then two two weeks after we fully give our last giving, and she was like, you know what? Let's let's check the mail. Why w- why would we check the mail? It's just junk mail. I don't want to check it. He was annoyed. Yeah, I was annoyed. <laughs> he was annoyed. And then she was like, yeah, let's just check it. Okay, let's check. So I opened the I opened the mail. There's a lot of junk mail. Oh, here. <laughs> this is yours. Figure it out which one is ours and throw out the rest. So when I was like, and then she was like, um, you know, sorting it out while I was like playing, playing in my phone and. Yeah. So we randomly found a check in the mail. <laughs> so the check amount is. So. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we found a check that is triple the amount of what we originally gave. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I know I did a testimony about it. I, I was like being humble, I, but that is false humility. You know, I only said double. You know, but this time, you know, I, uh, the Lord God is really faithful. You know, and he, he gave us triple the amount of what more than we can ever imagine. And, you know, we, check, we even checked the date. So um, w- let's say, for example, uh, we gave on the 26th, right? The last payment was 26th. The day before that, the check was already on its way. And who can do that, right? Only God, right? So we can never really give God because, you know, as we obey and follow Him, that He will always bless us more, you know, even more what we could have ever imagined. So I just want to encourage everyone in this building blocks, you know, if, if God has spoken to your heart to be able to pledge, to be able to, you know, invest in His kingdom, let your yes be yes. Yeah, and so pledge, and I believe that in His perfect timing, you know, God will bless us more. And that is our testimony. All right. Right. Um, so that's the challenge. And we have a bigger challenge because you know how we did that is that we had um, the, the poster. Remember that? When they destroyed the, the walls upstairs, huh? Jomar didn't remove the building blocks poster. <laughs> yeah, so it was thrown away. The problem is, we didn't record it. We have the picture when we started doing the campaign. So there's no way for us to check on you. Right? And to tell you, hoy, pledge nyo. Right? <laughs> we can't do that anyway. Well, no, I'm not, we're not doing it anyway. But what I'm saying is because I know that some of you, that uh, most of you who had been with us last year, um, actually had, had um, signed there. And some of you already, um, so when you sign, and then when you give, you color it, remember? So half of the poster was already filled up before it was taken down. So now the, it's gone, and it's really like a challenge. But here's a, uh, so again, uh, we, will, uh, this, uh, we will complete our pledges di- this July, right? So this July, for those who would pledge. And I know some of you, because... Do you know that our uh, young people, um, what's the name of, yan yan, ang pangalan ng cell group mo? Illuminate. Do you know that the Illuminate, they have no way of really like, a, a, they, they don't work. And so if then they decided to pledge $2,000, two blocks, $2,000, these are kids. And you know what? They started working together and they are now at $100. <laughs> no, 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 no. And they, no, no. they started selling stuff, making stuff, you know, and then they sold it to you. Right? Right? But they were able to make more than $1,000 already. That's amazing, right? And I'm actually encouraging Yen Yen to actually uh, rally her team because if not, she's going to pay the rest. <laughs> Right. And, and Yang Yen has a pledge of her own too. Right? So what's the point? Uh, again, the point is, the point is again, when, you, when the Lord God um, speaks to your heart, listen to it. Right? And, uh, again, um, when you did the pledge, I, I hope that you prayed and not just, this is my idea. You know? And so, uh, and as a matter of fact, there's, there's a lot to what given. Uh, uh, there's like a, uh, one who had uh, pledged around 10,000, uh, 10 blocks, right? And then right away, the first month, it was already 
filled up. And there's another one, there's another one. And it's just amazing how we were able to fill up the blocks. Right? So again, we encourage you. And um, Jomar and Mara's testimony, I was not expecting actually because Jomar never told me. He just told it when he, um, uh, when he presided. But here it is. Brad, ako may karapatang mag-react. Kahit kailan hindi mo pa ako nilibre. Joke, joke, joke. Mas madalas akong naglilibre sa'yo. Ano ka? Right? Pero ito po. But here's reality po. No? I don't know if they still remember. Um, there was a, we had a speaker in church um, pre-COVID times. Right? And uh, the speaker was really like so direct to the point about uh, the, the, how you are going to be blessed. And one of the points that he gave is actually to bless your pastor. Right? To bless your pastor. And, uh, you know, and uh, so there's like several uh, of you that had uh, started. And then of course, during time while I was, even I, as I was listening to that, I was, uh, it, was uh, it was a cringe while listening to it. And I was already the pastor, I, was, I am the pastor of the church at, at that time. But do you know, right, um, one of the surprises that I had is that Jomar and Mara, Right, Jomar and Mara, out of the blue, um, talked to me. And then they were the first one who had actually given me, can I say the amount? Hindi mo na malala? Bilangan eh, no? Pero ito yan. I was just blown away because they gave me $2,000. And I was like thinking, si Jomar? Si Mara, pwede pa. Right? Pero true. And I was just like blown away. And after that, Jomar started having problems with his jobs. Um, he lost the company that he was leading during the time. In, nandiyan pa rin, pero walang nangyayari. Right? Ah, by the way, si Jomar po was a former, was a former, was a former CEO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my heart was being broken seeing that they were having challenges. Right, talaga sakit ng puso ko kasi, you know, Lord, dapat bi-bless mo itong mga to because they blessed me. And it's not being evident during the time. But apparently kasi yung seed, it doesn't grow overnight. Di po ba? And this is a big seed that they had given, right? And it took a while kasi hindi lang pala, kasi I was like really worried about their finances during the time. Kasi hindi lang finances yung bubuhay ng Panginoon sa buhay nila. You know what the Lord God did? Finally, the Lord God called Jomar. Right? And finally, Jomar, um, by the way, ang tunay po talagang pangalan ni Jomar, Jonah. Uh, <laughs> Jonah. Right? So I told him, and finally, you know, and, and so you, some of you know the story, that's for another, another thing, but I was just so glad that this couple had learned to listen to the Lord. Right? And now, can you imagine? I was like, you know, when he told me it's, a, um, it's, a, um, it's three times, then he told me, Pastor, kailan kaya available ni, tawag ni, ni Jomar kay K. Michel, sa ate yan, no? Sa ating pastor. Then she, then, uh, tapos sabi niya, ano, kain tayo, ganyan. Tapos sabi, kain, tapos sumalaman, kain, nag-aaya sa, ano, amazing grace lang. <laughs> sabi ko, ano, magkano yan? Time Street, amazing grace. Kaya, itong week po, kakain kami sa Wolfman. Yeah. Uh, Ina-announce ko pa na, hindi ko pa alam. <laughs> yeah. Wolfgang, ha? Wolfgang, alam niyo magkano yung stake sa Wolfgang? Right, research nyo na lang. Yan. <laughs> right? But much more than that, it's not just about that. Um, from their testimony, I pray those that again, we are campaigning again to complete our pledges because God is doing a great thing in our church and God is doing a great thing through you and again with you. So praise the Lord. Let's, let's give it up for Jomar and Mara one more time. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that uh, your blessing upon Lord Coach Jomar and Mara. I pray, Lord God, that you are, again, building a foundation, not only, Lord God, for their lives, but, Lord God, for their divine assignment in your ministry. Lord God, I pray that you will continue, Lord God, to use them mightily. And we have seen, Lord God, how they have grown. And I pray that they will... Again, Lord God, continue, Lord God, to grow as they even, Lord God, lead Lightcast Manila. In Jesus, Lightcast, Lord God, Little Manila. 
So we thank you, Lord God, for all this, and we lift you up, Lord God, and I pray for everyone, Lord God, who had pledged and those who had already given. I pray again, Lord God, that they are going to see and experience what Jomar and Mara had seen too. Again, Lord God, not just, Lord God, the, the financial blessing, but most of all, that they are going to see, Lord God, that indeed our God is real. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, let's all stand as we read God's word. It will be shown in our screen. We will be reading the book in the book from the book of Matthew chapter 16 verses 15 to 18. Let's all read. He said to them, "But who do you say that I am?" Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had revealed to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Blessings be unto the Lord upon the reading of his word. Church, let's all welcome our speaker for today, Coach Jake Ramos. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? Good morning. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, 
we show that we actually showed this film at the beginning of the series The Warrior's Way. And um, we decided to uh, show it again just to because today is actually uh, the last message for this series. So we are capping off uh, our series, The Warrior's Way. And throughout this series, we've been discussing what it means to be a warrior, a soldier of God. Now, we've been using samurai as a depiction of the Christian warrior. The samurai means one who serves. And just like the samurai, we serve the one true king, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, that is God, right? And the samurai follow a code, and that code of conduct is called Bushido, which literally translates to the way of the warrior, right? And us Christian soldiers, we also follow a code, and that is the word of God. That is the Bible. Amen. Amen. And, you know, the, the, the samurai, they also have to go through training, right? Just like us Christian soldiers, we have to go through training as well. Our duty is to fulfill the Great Commission, to advance and claim territories for Christ and his kingdom. We are to put on the full armor of God so that we can defend and offend to take, to take on the devious schemes of the devil. And so we have to go through all of that, right? And now, with all these things that we have in our arsenal, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to charge. Church, charge. Remember, if you guys remember, uh, a few weeks ago, I gave the message on weapons of defense. And my third point was charge. Do you guys remember that? So when I say church, you guys say charge. Church? Ch church? Charge. Amen. Amen. Charge. <laughs> so that is the title of our message today. Church, charge. And we're going to take this uh, third point that I had previously, and we're going to um, we're going to expand on this third point. Church, charge. Let's open in a word of prayer. Lord God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for this whole entire series, The Warrior's Way. Lord, thank you, Father God, for uh, revealing to us what it means to be a true warrior of God. Lord, teach us, Father God, through your word. Speak through me, Father God. May your words speak life to us, Father Lord, open the hearts and minds of your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And once again, our text is found in Matthew 16. In Matthew 16. And we're going to start with verse 15. I know we read this earlier, but we're going to go over this again. So Matthew 16. And it says here in verse 15, He said to them, But who do you say I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And verse 18, and it says here, And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So here, Jesus is asking his disciples who they say he is. And Peter came to the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the anointed one, the Messiah, the one true king. And this revelation did not come from Peter's own human understanding, it didn't come from flesh and blood, but it came from the Father himself, from the Father in heaven. And I want us to focus on this verse 18, okay? I want, I, we're going to break this verse down, and I hope that you can all follow along with me. And I want you to take a look at what Christ says here. He says, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, let me ask you this. 
Can, can the gates of hell chase after you? Can it chase after you? No. No, it's a gate, right? The gates of hell stay where they are, in hell. It is the church that is charging towards the gates of hell. The church, again, is not a building. It is the people, the children of God, believers of the faith all around the world, putting on the full armor of God. We are a unified army under our one true king, and the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the charge. And we are charging those gates, and it will not prevail. So church, charge. But the question is, how? How? How do we charge the gates of hell? And that's what we're going to go over today. And throughout this message, as we go over the, uh, this scripture in verse 18, we're going to be doing some actions, right? Because we are, we are warriors. We are Christian soldiers. And as soldiers, we need to take action. So I want to invite all of you to stand up. Everybody stand up. Don't worry, you don't need to leave your seats, but stay where you are. Just make sure you stand up. And we're going to be doing some actions, okay? So the first action, the first action is this. I want you to take two fists like this, and I want you to put them together like this. Okay? Come on, show, show the enemy how tough you are. Let's go. <laughs> All right, give it, give it some gravitas. All right? All right, the next one, the next one, the next one is this. All right, let's do that again. All right. And then the third one, the third one, make sure, make sure you be careful with this one. I want you to take two fists, all right? And I want you to push forward. Just make sure you don't punch the person in front of you, okay? All right, let's do that again. All right. And the last one, the last one is this. Thumbs up, right here, and then, and then down, like that, okay? All right, so let's do that again from the top. Ready? All right, very good. Give yourselves a hand, everybody. All right, you can, you can all sit down. You can all sit down. Do, do those moves look familiar to you? <laughs> do those moves look familiar to you? No, it's not The Rock. It's close. It's actually The Undertaker. How, how many of you who know who, who The Undertaker is? That's, that's, uh, for, for those of you who, who are familiar with professional wrestling, The Undertaker is a professional wrestler. He's retired now, but, but these were some of the moves that he, he used to do to scare his opponents, right? He would come to the ring walking slowly with his music playing. And then when he gets to the ring, you know, he, has, he wears these MMA gloves. So he kind of like, you know, gets ready to fight. You know, he puts his two fists together. And then, you know, the lights are out in the arena, and then when he goes to the ring, he raises his hands up, and then the lights go up, right? And then, you know, when he's fighting his opponents in the ring, you know, he's like pushing them away, right? And then his finisher is the tombstone pile driver, so he would signal to the crowd that he's about to give the finisher, all right? And then he would deliver his, finish, his, his finisher, but, you know, The Undertaker, he's known as a very dark character, someone who is evil. That's the kind of character that he was portraying. But we're going to take those moves that came from a very dark character, and we're going to bring them to the light. Amen? Amen. So again, going back to verse 18, we're going to break this down so we can understand this a little better. Christ says, you are Peter. You are Peter. In Greek, Peter is translated to Petros. I want you guys to say that word, Petros. Petros. And Petros, it means rock. But it doesn't mean just any rock. It means a small rock. 
a rock that you can that you can pick up that you can carry around with you so it's a small rock right and you can um he's basically telling peter who he is you are peter you are petros you are a small rock church do you know who you are <laughs> who are you we are light cast who are you who are you light cast you are light cast that's right we are light cast <laughs> We are light cast. Now, why are we called light cast? Why is our church called light cast? And here's why. Matthew 5.16. Matthew 5.16, and it says here, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. When we shine a light before men, we are shining a light we are shining the light of the Lord Jesus Christ who is in us and our identity is in him and if our identity is in Christ then we exhibit Christ that's our first point for today we exhibit Christ when charging the gates of hell we must exhibit Christ so that means that Christ is with us all right, let's do that again. Let's do the action again. Christ is with us. with us. Amen. So we are showing the world who Christ is through our actions and through our words. You know, there are still many people around us, people in our lives who are still lost, who need the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. You know, that's our, our family, our friends, our loved ones our neighbors, our co-workers or classmates, you know, they all, they're all lost. They're looking for meaning in their life and they need Jesus. But how will they know who Jesus is if we don't show them, right? It says here that we are, that we are, that, that to let your light shine before men right so we need to exhibit jesus light towards the world we need to exhibit christ you know last week um uh, actually two weeks ago we were in new orleans and we were there for the sbc conference and we were going through the the convention center and there was an exhibit hall and in the exhibit hall we um there are a lot of vendors a lot of vendors a lot of cities uh seminaries colleges and they were um exhibiting they were showcasing their products they were showcasing what they can offer to churches to potential um students who are planning to go to seminary and so they were exhibiting um their products what they want you to see and they would hand out like free stuff like free t-shirts free mugs stickers uh, pins and that was their way of attracting people to their booth you know hey 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 come here come here let me show you something let me show you what we can offer and that's something that we as Christians should be doing with the people that we care about because if we don't then they can go to hell, right? And so we need to exhibit Christ. Tell people how God has changed our lives for the better through our testimonies, through our stories of how we have come to faith. You know, the Bible calls us living stones. And it says here in 1 Peter 2.5, it says, you also, as living stones, are being built up, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
Have you ever seen how altars were built back then? Abraham built altars. Jacob built altars. Moses built altars. Whenever they encountered God, they would build an altar. And during this time, when they built an altar, they used whatever stones that they could find around them. So they piled those stones up on top of one another to create something bigger, to create an altar. Those pieces of stones, those pieces of Petros, were put together to create an altar. We are those stones that are being built up to create the spiritual house. And again, Jesus calls him Peter. You are Peter. You are Petros. Now, what was his name before? Simon, Simon right? He was Simon. But now Jesus gives him a new name, a new identity. He is a new creation. He is Peter, and he is Simon no more. When Peter discovered who Jesus was, Christ helped him discover who he was in Christ. And uh, Pastor Michael Maiden said this. Don't quote me on this. This is not my quote, but this is from Pastor Michael Maiden. And he said this, The more I get to know God, the more I get to know who I am in God. The revelation of my identity comes in the revelation of who God is in my life. Let me repeat that again. <clears throat> the more I get to know God, the more... I get to know who I am in God. The revelation of my identity comes in the revelation of who God is in my life. Amen. Now in 2 Corinthians 5.17, and it says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away Behold, all things have become new. He was Simon, and now Jesus calls him Peter, his new identity. Next, when we are charging the gates of hell, we need to exalt Christ. Exalt Christ. When we exalt Christ, we are therefore lifting him up. So let's do the next action. We are lifting him up. All right. So what was the first one? What was the first one? We exhibit Christ. What was the movement for exhibit? When we exhibit Christ, that means we are with Christ. And then the next one, we exalt Christ. So we are lifting him up. Amen. So, when we stand on the solid rock of our salvation, we stand on Christ in our salvation and in righteousness. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and it says here, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Now, righteousness is not our own. Let me make that clear. Righteousness is not our own, but it is imputed on us through the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it has been credited to us. We gain access to righteousness, not because of anything that we have done, but because Christ applied it to our account. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so now going back to our main scripture, Christ says, on this rock. On this rock. So, what did he call Peter? He called Peter Petros. You are Peter. You are Petros. But now, he's saying here, on this rock. So he's referring to another rock. And he's not referring to Peter here. 
he's not referring to Petros. He is referring, the rock that, that Christ is referring to here is translated to Petra. Okay, so first we had Petros, and now we have Petra. And Petra, it also means rock, but it means a bigger rock, or a massive rock, like a bedrock. And so you see the two differences between these rocks, Petros, Petros, which is a small rock, and Petra, a big rock. So when studying God's word, it's important to really look into the translations, right? Because sometimes when it's translated in English, um, it can have like a different meaning. But when you look at the original translation in Greek, Petros, small rock, Petra, big rock. So Christ also uses the word this, on this rock. By using the word this, Christ is pointing to something that requires our attention. He is giving importance to it. On this rock, on this massive rock, it's something that can be seen from far away. He will build something that will be seen from far away. Unlike a small stone. Can you see a small stone from far away? No, of course not. You cannot see a Petros from far away. You would have to move closer in order to see it, right? But on this rock, on this Petra, you can see it from far away because it's massive. It's a solid foundation, which means, which means that Christ is our solid foundation. Amen? Therefore, you can build something on it that will not fall. Do you remember the parable of the two houses? One was built on the rock and the other was built on sand. Let's go to that passage in Matthew 7. Matthew 7, and we're going to start with verse 24. And it says here, therefore, and this is Christ speaking here, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. And so with a solid foundation, we exalt Christ. We stand on Christ. Christ is our solid rock, the rock of our salvation, and he is the source of life. John 10.10, 10, Christ came so that we may have what? Life, and that we may have it more abundantly. Amen. Is there anywhere else we should be standing other than Christ? What happens if we, if we don't have a solid foundation in Christ? What happens if we don't stand on Christ. Just like the house that was built on sin, we start to sink and fall, just like that foolish man. And just like the song goes, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is what? Sinking sand. Is that where you want to be? On the sinking sand? No. Of course not. And, uh, you know, when I was uh, trying to get my foot in the door in the, uh, in the film industry, I was, uh, I was going from one gig to another. And, uh, you know, I would shoot different things. You know, I, I would shoot film, movies, um, TV, uh, you know, ad advertisements, you know. I even shot weddings. Right? And, and I enjoy taking part in these, you know, different film projects. You know, I love shooting. I love 
working on film. You know, it's a real passion of mine. But sometimes the things that I'm being asked to shoot or work on um, might be questionable. You know, even though I enjoy filming, I enjoy shooting, I don't always enjoy the content that I am shooting or working on. But, you know, I did it. I did it out of um, necessity, out of, um, you know, because I was promised to get paid and to, to get my work noticed, to gain more, more exposure, to, uh, you know. But you see this, this uh, film industry, you know, it's a, very, it's a very cutthroat business. You know, your, your beliefs, your convictions, you know, you have, to be, you have to be strong in them because if not, this business will eat you alive, you know, because you're kind of forced to play by their rules. And unfortunately, I wasn't always able to stand firm. You know, I was, I was shooting music videos for several up-and-coming artists, and um, I was... Uh, you know, most of the most of the stuff that I that I shot, you know, I, I enjoyed it because it it gave me a lot of creative freedom, you know, to shoot and you know I love cinematography, so I'm always about getting that perfect shot, right? I had a lot of creative freedom, but I don't have a choice when it comes to the content that they want me to shoot. So because of that. Um, you know, during these shots, in, actually in between takes, you know, again, these are, these are up and coming artists, these are independent artists, they're not signed by any record labels, but, you know, in, in the entertainment industry, um, drugs and alcohol are, uh, are a big thing, right? And so in between takes, you know, these artists, they, they like to enjoy their, uh, Let's call them recreational drugs, right? So now, of course, I never took part in any of that. You know, my, I'm there to do a job, right? But I can't stand the smell of it. You know, I hate it. And I would go home smelling like that. You know, it was on my clothes, you know? And uh, I always have to, like, make sure that, that I wash my clothes, right? And, you know... <clears throat> There were other instances where some of the videos that I worked on had some a bit of a mature content. Now, you know, with these artists, you know, uh, you know, it, I, it's, it's, it's a rap and hip hop, by the way. And so with these artists, you know, there's a lot of cursing in their songs. And then, you know, they would feature like background dancers, you know, with these girls in their music videos. It wasn't, it wasn't sexual or anything, but it can mess around with your imagination, right? And so I had, I had to go through that, you know? When I, when I was shooting these videos and I tried my best, my, my best to avoid, you know, I had to close my eyes sometimes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it eventually led to a meeting with producers from MTV because uh, I got my work noticed, right? And guess, guess what they wanted me to work on? Guess what these MTV producers wanted me to work on? More videos like this, like the ones that I'm shooting, but on a bigger scale, on a bigger budget. So it was a big opportunity, um, you know, to get my work out there, to get my foot in the door. Um, you know, at, at the time, what was in my mind was that, ooh, I'm going to make it a lot of money because I'm now working with MTV. I'm going to be working with MTV and, you know, and their parent company, Viacom, which owns a lot of, uh, which, which owns Paramount, which is a film studio. And so that was kind of like, oh, if I, if I work here, then maybe I can make my way towards there, towards uh, an actual film studio. I'll do a little bit of work here with MTV on a smaller scale and then work my way up towards, you know, Paramount Pictures, right? But the deal didn't go through and, um, I don't know what was the reason. I don't know if it was the funding or if they had a change of heart. But it didn't go through. And I actually, looking back at it now, I thank God that it didn't go through. 
You know, God closed the door on that one. But at the time, I was still being stubborn. So my stubbornness and foolishness, just like the man who built his house on the sand, my stubbornness and foolishness led me to another gig, to another job. And I was working for this media company um, where I was hired as an assistant video editor. And so I would edit these videos and upload them online. And most of these videos were like celebrity gossip videos. That you know those ads that you see on like those uh, online, like it's kind of like TMZ, but uh, but uh, uh, I guess um, <laughs> a cheaper on a cheaper budget, right? And so I would I would uh, you know edit those videos, and um, then later on I got moved to to actually uploading videos for streaming uh, for Amazon Video because uh, this media company has a collection of uh, independent and low-budget movies, movies that nobody has ever heard of, and the only way that people can hear about them is if you tell them. So these movies ne have never seen the light of day. They've never been in theaters. These were movies that were straight to video. And so my job was to upload those videos, to convert them for, uh, for streaming, and then upload them to Amazon Video. A few months later, my, uh, my boss comes in to bring in uh, some DVDs. And uh, these DVDs are like old DVDs of older movies um, and sporting events like boxing and MMA. And so my task was to take those DVDs and digitize them, create them into digital files on the computer so that we can eventually upload them online. But there was another box of DVDs and in them were mature adult content. So <laughs> it was pornography. And, and I said, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. And so I quit that job. Like, I didn't want to touch it. I didn't want to look at it. I never touched that box. I left that job. The lesson the lesson is this if you want to get into the film industry don't get into hollywood because there's a lot of crazies out there don't work for a major studio or a media company that forces you to compromise your beliefs take my advice and go independent create your own content with your own vision and not somebody else's don't compromise but as you can see, my feet weren't planted on a solid foundation, so I would go wherever the wind would take me because I wanted to do my own thing away from God's original design. And, I, and, and just like the house that was built on the sand, I eventually sank and came crumbling down. You know, these jobs that I was, uh, you know, these jobs... Um, that I was in, you know, it forced me to compromise, right? To play by their rules. I was abiding in them and not abiding in God. And so I needed to replant my feet on the solid rock. These jobs were taking my time away from what's more important, and that's giving my time for the Lord. Jesus, the solid foundation and since Christ is our solid rock, our solid foundation, we stand on God's promises. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says here, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. Doesn't that sound good? All his promises are yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. Why should we stand somewhere else when the solid rock promises us yes and amen? And so stand firm in the Lord. Amen. Now going back to our passage, Christ says, I will build my church. I will build my church. Where is he building his church? On this 
rock, on this rock, on the Petra, the solid foundation, not Petros. He is not building his church on top of Peter. A lot of people, a lot of people tend to misinterpret this verse, thinking that Christ is referring to Peter as the rock he will build his church on, but no, it's this rock. Have you ever uh, seen uh, the, the dinosaur fossils? Where they find them? Where do they find them? Sometimes, you know, underground, but sometimes they are embedded within the rocks. And these are massive rocks. You know, these are massive rocks that have been there for thousands of years, right? And so you see here, Peter, he's only a human. You know, he is a Petros. He will not last. But Christ, who is the solid rock, the solid foundation, just like those rocks where they find those dinosaur fossils, they last forever. Amen. So, again, it's not Peter, but it is this solid rock who is Jesus, who is the only way. And we know that the church, again, is not a building. It is the people in it. People who are lifting one another up, lifting Christ up, encouraging one another, being accountable to one another, and building lives together and fulfilling the great commission. On this rock, I will build my church. We are the church. So we are to expand Christ's kingdom. And that is our next point. We expand Christ's kingdom. When you are charging the gates of hell, you must expand Christ's kingdom. Let's do that movement together and make sure you don't, again, you don't punch the person in front of you. We expand. Come on. We expand Christ's kingdom. Amen. When you expand, you are pushing forward. You are pushing forward to expand, to advance his kingdom. You see, the church is built on solid rock, and the foundation is Jesus. The church is where God prepares us. Amen? We are taught the principles and cultures of God's kingdom. Then we are sent out. Sent out to bring God's kingdom to the world and win the world for Jesus. The Great Commission... The Great Commission says this in Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. You see, the church was not built to be a hidden place, but to be an influence on the world, to be salt and light to the world. The church is the collection of all people who come to faith in Christ as Savior. The church exists only because of the central truth that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that is the power that keeps the gates of hell from overcoming those who are in Christ, his people, who is the church. Who are you? Lightcast, who are you? Lightcast, in war, you need to strategize on how to advance. If you stay in one place for far too long, you will lose the battle. And so you need to charge forward. You need to advance and expand. You need to advance and expand Christ's kingdom. Now, how do we charge forward? How do we expand? There are four steps doing so. Four steps. 
And here's what they are. Win, consolidate, disciple, and send. Let's show that on the screen. Win, consolidate, disciple, and send. So we need to evangelize. We need to share the gospel to people around us, to people who are lost. We can do that by sharing our testimonies of what God has done in our lives and how he can do the same for them. How God had gave us a new identity, how we were transformed and became a new creation. Show them, exhibit to them what they are missing. Win souls for Christ. Consolidation is the careful attention that we give the new believer in order to reproduce in them the character of Christ so that their life will, will complete the purpose of God by bearing fruit that lasts. It's an efficient process to form disciples. It is the step where the new believer reaffirms their personal decision to Jesus. Discipleship is character formation. Character formation. What did Jesus do? Just as a potter takes clay to mold dust into something beautiful and useful, Jesus molded the lives of 12 men. He formed the lives of 12 disciples through his teachings, through his words, his life, and his example. Making disciples consists of preparing cell leaders in an efficient way so that they cultivate the ability of winning souls for Christ, continuing the process with new believers until they become successful leaders themselves. And finally, we send, we send our disciples out to lead others to Christ, consolidating and discipling others the way we did for them. Disciples become disciple makers. It's a continuous cycle where all who receive Christ are trained to train others. And the church continues to grow, to multiply, and expand. Just like the early church in the, books, in, in the book of Acts, fulfilling the Great Commission, Christ says, all nations so there is no place that the gospel cannot reach amen there is no place that the gospel cannot reach and so once again in order to charge the gates of hell we need to exhibit christ because we are with christ with christ we exalt christ and we expand christ and now, to give our final point for today, let me invite the senior pastor of Lightcast Church International, <laughs> Dr. Reverend Bishop, <laughs> Pastor, Ron, pastor Ronald Ramirez, amen. Thank you. So say it with me. The first one is, we exhibit Christ. We exalt Christ. We expand Christ's kingdom. Yep. And the last one, the last point is this. Yeah. Look at the person beside you and tell them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And so this, this one is we exterminate Christ's enemies' territories. Yep. Yep. Sorry, sorry. Yep. And, uh, and then uh, we, we wanted it all, right? So, um, and when we expand Christ's kingdom, when we expand Christ's kingdom, right, what we are actually doing is actually invading the territory of the enemy. Remember what the Lord God said, that we are not fighting against flesh and blood? This is not physical. It can, it can become physical. Don't get me wrong. But the Lord God is telling us that, you know, that this is becoming physical, but this is a spiritual war. Again, if you remember the first message, 
that God claims everything and every second for his glory, and Satan is counter-claiming that. And the real fight is for your souls, for the souls of all humans. That's what he is doing. And so what happened? And I praise the Lord God because somebody loved me enough in order to bring me to his kingdom. So the meaning of this actually in exter exterminating, you know, exterminating. Did, did you, I was not here. Did you do the, the pal driver? Yeah. There you go, and then here. <laughs> no? And that's the pile driver, right? So you, you, he spikes them and then and does this. All right? But by the way, the undertaker became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know, right now, um, a lot of MMA fighters and a lot of wrestlers are becoming Christians, and we praise the Lord God for that. So what's the point there? And we, in expanding Christ's kingdom, it is actually reclaiming these territories. Right? These territories, the Lord God is actually claiming that. That's what we are doing. There was this one time, real story. Somebody actually went to one of our young people and then said that they don't want to join like us or they are trying to avoid like us because um, we are a recruiting agency. Yeah. And, and indeed, we are. But we are not only a recruiting agency, we are a rescuing mission. Because we are actually recruiting them. There's a meaning of spiritual conversion is from darkness into light. From darkness into light. So that's what we are doing. We be, are bringing God's light to these dark territories. So listen up. That's why the name of our church, who are you? That's the point. We cast the light, and the light is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are just reflecting him. Are you getting this? So we are identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift the Lord Jesus Christ up, and we go forward the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, and now we bring down the gates of hell. So when you go to the gates of hell, right? When you go to the gates of hell, um, it, it, it's not the gates of hell. The, the Bible says again for our fourth part of that, um, uh, of that uh, uh, passage. Remember what it says? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But it didn't say that it will be easy. The hardest fight is by the gates. Right? That's why when you... So how do we do this? It isn't again proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, the enemy will hit hardest. When you are trying to, trying to follow Christ, when you are trying to... Um, so, coming to church on Sundays, coming to church on Sundays, Satan is okay with that. Especially for those of you that at the very start of the church, you're already this, you're praying. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you know. God is, I mean, you know, the, the enemy, God's enemies are okay with that. Right? They even would actually tell you, you will agree with what the message had said. Oh yeah, Pastor, tama yan, tama yan. Yes, Lord. That's right, Lord. But the question is, you know what the enemy does? He doesn't want you to apply. When it comes to application, oh, it's hard. Lord, I'm, I'm going to give my life for you. Hmm. Then you didn't attend the cell group. Or if you attend, you attend sporadically. Right? You don't attend church on Sundays. Right? For those who are online. Why aren't you here? <laughs> right? And of course, there are times that it happens and that's why we are doing even the online. But if I'm going to really be, you know, if it's going to just be my choice, we are not going to have online anymore. But of course, we understand. We realize that this is needed. But here's the thing. We become, you know, it's when it's convenient. But when it, con it, con when it inconveniences us, we don't want to do it anymore. Right? Lord, I'm going to die for you. Uh, why, why aren't you in church last week? Pastor Umulan. <laughs> right? So, are you fa following this? And here it is. And let me warn you. 
if you want to follow Christ closely, right? If you are really following Christ closely, you are going to actually rescue other people from darkness, from hell. That's the meaning of charging the gates of hell. Here's what the Lord God had promised. Our enemy is already defeated. And there's no weapon that is formed against you that will win against the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So the word that I feel like while studying is the invincible. Yeah. Pastor, um, um, Pastor, I'm with you in spirit. I'm sabi mo kasi invisible kami. You know? That's the meaning of that. We're invincible because you know the enemy will try to hurt. They, he will try to hurt your job. He will try to hurt. He will try to hurt your family. He will try to even hit you personally. But here's the thing. He cannot do anything that is not going to be allowed by the Lord. And if the Lord allows that, the Lord God said that no matter how evil it is. Right? The enemy meant it for evil, but God will turn it for sure for your good. Yeah. Tap the person beside you and tell them, are you having problems right now? Yeah. God will turn it for good. Mm. God will turn it for good. Yep. I know. Now, come on. Yep. That's the reality. The Lord God had promised that. Parang gusto ko tapos yung message dito, right? So, that's it. And so the Lord God... And here, again, so we exterminate Christ's enemy's territories. So again, the expansion of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call this the Great Commission. Say it with me. The Great Commission. And what is the Great Commission? It is again, the Lord God says that we make disciples of all nations. Listen here. And so the Lord God said, so what is our, how are we going, like to, what are the territories? He said, in your, in your Jerusalem, that's New York for us. That's New York for us. Your Judea, that's USA for us and the Philippines. Right? The Philippines. And uh, Samaria, Samaria are the adjacent places. You know, adjacent places, Canada, right? Um, again, we have Mexico and even London. But right now, actually, the world had already shrunk because of, the, because of uh, you know, faster flights. Can you imagine you can go to the Philippines within 14 hours straight flight? Right? 14 hours, yeah, you know? Yeah, the... The, the, the PAL yeah, the PAL pilot is rushing too much. Right? Right? So, and, and here it is. Right? So the world had become smaller, but he, he, here's what we are seeing. Right? So before I go on, let me show you a clip that this is what happened to Christianity. And you're also going to see the resistance, but praise the Lord God, because the gates of hell will never prevail against us. So let's at this clip.
are not done yet. The, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I will come again. After the gospel has been preached to every nation, the meaning of that is every tribe, every people group, right? And we praise the Lord God because um, before the pandemic, missionologists say it is one is to six. One Christian to six. Now is one is to four. So it is coming soon. Let's do our job. Right? So here, um, so the Great Commission, what are we doing? So here's actually what we are doing as a church. So right now, um, we praise the Lord God because our Jerusalem here in uh, uh, this is our Jerusalem. And of course, we are praying for our Jerusalem that by next year, by our anniversary, we are going to have 12 like us churches in Metro New York. Right? And we are expanding by September. We are launching the three churches right? Um, that's, uh, that is going to be led by our coaches. So you are going to be part of this. Uh, of this uh. So we are not going to have a worship service here, but rather we are going to be in Long Island. We are going to be in Little Manila. We are going to be in Ozone Park, U Gardens, and Richmond Hill area. And uh, by the way, it's not only three. It's going to be four. And we are also going to be in Jersey City. Come on, church, right? <laughs> So we praise the Lord God for that. We actually helped plant seven churches already. And like as Manila had planted, you know, um, we have like as Manila being led by Pastor Art um, um, and uh, Jean Esmalia at Jean. And so, you know, what's happening there is that they also already planted two like as churches, right? This is already full launch. And they are catalyzing two more. And there's another pastor, Pastor Marlon Peregrin, who's plan, who's actually like talking with us. We're talking together, and we are going to actually might be able like to adopt his church, and they're going to become like us because they believe in the mission that we are doing. They want to be in church planting, and they see what we are doing. He's also a top guy's black belt who became a pastor, and he's actually like asking, what can we do, and how can we learn from you? So that's what we are doing. So the Lord God is using, using us together, and we praise the Lord God for that. But let me tell you. Um, in, order for, in order for us to do this, we need resources too. I praise the Lord God that we were able to plant um, Pastor, I help Pastor Zong season in, um, his real name is Bonifacio. Zong, huh? <laughs> Bonifacio. All right. But, uh, Pastor Zong is uh, planted in Cavite, right? And I praise the Lord God. You know who had supported them all throughout the years? It's Ozone Park Cell Group. Come on, church. Yep. <laughs> And now, listen, God willing, right, by January next year, there will be already a Lycas Cambodia. Lycas Cambodia, right? And, um, and, and we are also like looking because Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and uh, Vietnam, Thailand, and Myanmar actually can be reached throughout that. The, 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 the church planter there is also a black, black belt of top guys. He's uh, Jerry Garcia. He just took his, uh, his black belt um, two weeks ago, right? And it is amazing because, you know, what God is doing, and God will now, we are reaching out to our Samaria. And, of course, eventually we are praying that we are going to become a full Great Commission church because we are going to reach out to the whole world, right? You, you saw that map? I'm praying that there will be, you know, that I want to have a big map. Not map, map. <laughs> Upstairs, right, when we finally have that. And I want to peg, you know, the logo of like us wherever we are at. So we are advancing God's kingdom. Remember, we are not, a, we, we cannot do the work alone. We are not existing for like cast. We are existing for the kingdom of God. Say it with me. Kingdom of God. So here it is. Alright? So bear with me. Gutom na ba kayo? Alright. Sino po hindi pa gutom? Alright. Sino gutom na? Kayo mahuhuli sa kainan mamaya. Alright. Na, ano mapuhuli? Right. So here we are praying for that and we praise the Lord God for that. So let uh, so the aim of the Lord God, what is God's vision? One, two, three, what is God's vision? World, world conquest. And what is the meaning of world conquest? It is to win the world for God, back to God, 
through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Clear? Right? So this is what the Lord God wants us to do. So people, right? You are winners if you are participating in what God is doing. Do you want to be a winner? Right? And here's the thing about that. When you do the Great Commission, everybody here will tell you, tell you, everybody here, not, not one who is already winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ will tell you that they are losing. You know, the Lord God is actually, when you go and join the Great Commission, you know, the things in your life are going to be fixed too. Right? Your, your marriage, your finances, your jobs, your businesses tell you God is faithful. Can you imagine Jomar? Right? One of the things that Jomar is really afraid to go follow God in the ministry is because this guy wants to appear that he's cool. And that's his worry because it, now he becomes a pastor. He's going to be badui. Yeah. That because, you know, he's also scared, you know, because I experienced that. He hears that from me. That every time that I'm in a party, people will talk to me. But once they know that I am a pastor, there's a tendency that they become formal. And he doesn't want that. But when he followed the Lord Jesus Christ, you are this testimony. Right? And we are looking forward, again, that Zomar is going to be, again, the church planter in, in, uh, in Little Manila. Come on. You are Jake's testimony. Right? He had tried to delve into that. This guy is so talented that he actually trained other filmmakers who are now thriving in their, in, in, in their, in their industry. And Jake actually asked me one time, Pastor, how come it's not happening to me? Then I told him, I, you know, I don't have any answer. But after a while, when we talked, the Lord God already revealed because God is going to use him as his storyteller. Mm. And right now, film is still growing, even online. And can you imagine the, that short clip of the Warriors way? Yeah, the, our introduction. Can you imagine? That was great choreography and that was great shots. Amen. Right? It seems like it's not, it, when you put that in the world, nobody's going to think that a church did that. Right? But I want more blood. <laughs> you know? And here's the, here's, here's the thing. We are doing things internationally. We are sending you know, supplies to other missionaries. But the Lord God is telling us, you know, in order to win, we need to win our Jerusalem. And what is our Jerusalem? Again, where you are. Where we are, right? I'm, I'm from Elmer, so Elmer's, oh, ouch. Elmer's is my, is, my, is my Jerusalem, right? Maspeth is our Jerusalem, and we praise the Lord God because do you know that we had been in different places in, in, in Queens, but we never want people where we are at. We've been to Fresh Meadows, we've been to Woodside, nobody from the area. But you know, here in Grant, in, when, we, when we move here, do you know that there are already four families that we had won in this area, in Maspeth? Come on, church! Right? And we, so here's what we are going to do. Right? If your family is not, if your father, your mother, your children are not followers of the Lord Jesus Christ to, yet, right? We, you need to really pray hard to the Lord God because you need to bring God's light to your home. Number two, campuses. Number two campuses, where our kids study. For you young people, that's your campus, wherever you are at. You, the Lord God placed you there, hindi para magpakyut. Hmm. Ha? Huh? Hindi para magpakyut. Na sumasayoy ng... Then you even post it on TikTok thinking that you are cool, but then when it comes to about the mission that the Lord God had given you, right? Oh, I heard that you were a Christian. Who? Me? You have nothing to say. Right? But the Lord God put you where you are because you are God's witness there. So swing that sword. Right? And the next one, right? Our, the marketplace. Where you are working. The Lord God put you there no, not only to make money. Hey, pastor, I'm only a nanny. Do you know that the prince of Saudi Arabia, his children grew up 
you know, reading the Bible that they didn't know. Right? Um, over time, that's all. But do you know that the 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 the, 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 the grandchildren of the king of Saudi, right, became some of them became Christians. What's the reason? Because they, they have a Filipino nanny who is a Christian that when she taught the kids to, to read, she used the scriptures. Hmm. So when we say, Pastor, I'm only a nanny. You know, you can say, I am God's nanny. Yeah, and where you are. Yep. Mm. Here in Lycas, that two prominent um, jobs. Both are in Reg registered nurse and recognized nannies. Yeah, I know, right? And here, wherever you are at, and here's another thing in the marketplace God is raising business people in our church. And I praise the Lord God for you. God has given you a platform. So, we, what we do, we invade, we bring God's light to them. It's not again about light cast, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are we so this summer we are going to swing our swords. I kept on saying that, but I haven't introduced this. Right? Can you every family will get one of this at the end of so every family, only one. Because this is very expensive, it's original, right? Um, it's original. We got it from Japan. Nueva Isia. Right? <laughs> and you know, and this sword, um, this sword. It's really expensive. This is uh, this is twenty seven thousand yen. <laughs> yeah, but but kidding aside, right? That the meaning of that swing your sword, the sword of the spirit again is what? Is the word of God, the only weapon in the whole universe that when it hits you, it gives you life. Is the scriptures. So when you see this, this spirit wherever it is, right? Remember the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. God had called you to become a warrior. So we bring, we swing the swords, we enter the gates of hell, right? In our homes, in our campuses, in the marketplace, wherever God brings us. And so let's bring this to a close. Let's bring this to a close. Now, what are we going to do? So in exterminating, here's actually what else we are doing. We are extracting souls. Right now, there's a word, um, there's a film, Extraction 2. It's not in Netflix, right? Extraction. It is actually a rescue mission. We are rescuing people from the territories of the devil, from darkness to light, from hell to heaven, right? From Satan, the enemy is out to kill and uh, uh, to steal and to kill and to destroy. But the Lord God had sent you to redeem so that they will be redeemed, they will be renewed, and their lives are going to be restored. Come on, church. The Lord God is going to bring you there. Is there anyone? How did you become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because somebody dared to share the gospel to you, to swing that sword. So swing, swing that sword. Let's, you know, and I know it's not easy, but here's what we're going to do, right? Um, in, in the Lord, there's this, um, in Luke chapter 5, in Luke chapter 5, it tells about the story of what Matthew did when he was called. Let's, let's open there. Matt, uh, Luke chapter 5. There you go. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi. That's Matthew. Sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. Follow me. And then look at the next one. So he left all, rose up, and followed them. Next one. Look at what he did. Then Levi gave him a feast. What was the reason why he went and started a feast? Was the reason? Right? So that they are going to be on the same table with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are launching this campaign. MMKP. Say it with me. MMKP. What is MMKP? It's meet my kaibigan party. Kaibigan is friend. 
And actually, the friend there is the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is MMKP? Right? Your cell groups, you are going to actually strategize so that you will be able to invite friends. There are three things that we are going to do during the time. To promote Christ, to promote your cell group, to promote the church. But again, we avoid preaching during the time. We want it to be fun. We want it to be lighthearted, right? But we want to pray for them. We want to pray for them. If there is any chance to present the gospel, right, we connect with them and discuss the gospel afterwards, right? So because everybody, when you invite them, there's a tendency that we actually have a preacher. We don't want to do that. So this is pre-evangelistic. And do you think you can do that? How many of you can invite a friend to dinner, right, with your cell group? Come on, raise your hand. Can you do that? Can you do that? All right. Yung mga hindi nagtas ng kamay, kawawa naman kayo. Wala kayong kaibigan. All right. So, so let me ask you, of sporting events, sporting events, swimming, right? There's a lot that we can do during the summer, right? When I signed up for this, I actually put only 200 that we want to actually get this gospel connection. But I think 200 is too small a number, right? 200, we have 21 cell groups. Right, you can join those small, uh, the smaller groups. You can join other, other small groups. I mean, uh, those uh, other cell groups and then do things together. And as a matter of fact, I was surprised. You know, Enlightened already did this yesterday. Right? They had fun. And, and that's it. We connect. We bring the Lord Jesus Christ. MMKP. So meet my kaibigan. Who's the kaibigan? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We swing our swords, you know that. So say that with me, M-M? K-P. And what's the meaning of that? And what is actually, who do, what are we promoting there? We promote Christ. We promote our cell group. We promote our church. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now let me ask you, how many of you wants your life Wants your life to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Right? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep it up. Keep it up. Right. Here's what God is telling you. Right? You, uh, don't, don't bring it down. Don't bring it down. Those who had raised their hands. Right? Those who had raised their hands. Now, if you had raised your hand, please stand up. For those who didn't raise your hand, don't bother. Right? Pero sana mapilitan kayo. And again, what the Lord Jesus, again, in our message today, let's do, let's do the actions again. Right? We exhibit Christ. We exalt Christ. We expand Christ's kingdom. And we exterminate enemy's territory. We are going to win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Tap the person beside you. Kapatid, we are going to win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that there is a friend in your heart right now. I know that there is a friend that is in your heart right now. That you want to introduce to the Lord Jesus Christ. You might have tried. This is a great opportunity. During this summer, we are going to do MMKB right just invite them bring them in the lord god puts you in their lives because god wants them to know him right and you are the key you are matthew in their lives right so you gotta swing that sword right so let me ask you are you promising today again the lord god honors pledges, honors vows but you gotta do this all right are you promising that you are going to invite a friend to MMKP in your cell group? All right? Those who are promising, again, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Now, as you do this, right? Keep it up. I want you now to raise with your hand the names of these people that you know who need the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Bring them to the Lord now. Pray for them. Mention them by name. Lord, I'm going to bring him to MMKP in our cell group. Come on, that's what you pray for, Lord. Work in their hearts. 
I want them to know you. Come on, church. Pray. Lift their names up. Come on, pray. Lift their names up. Come on. Yes, Lord. Lord, you come. Lord, just like Lord God Peter, like Andrew, like Levi, Lord Matthew, and all the apostles, that they were so excited when they had come to know you. So I pray, Lord God, bring us back the joy of our salvation. And Lord God, open our eyes that our friends, our families, our neighbors, they are going to go to hell if they are not going to know you. But Lord, use our lives so that they will be able to meet you. So Lord God, as we enter the Meet My Day and Lord God, parties, Lord God, season. Lord, we pray that you're going to go ahead of us. So we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Church! Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness that the light has come. And sing it to the nations. Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the mothers. Sing it to the daughters. To every generation. will be a very quick recognition because we don't want this Sunday pass without recognizing our graduates. Come on. Where are our graduates? Let's 
Uh, please stand up and come in front. We have something to give you. And I'm going to ask Pastor to pray for you. Do we have all the graduates? And also, we would like, this is the first time we are also recognizing teachers, assistant teachers, you know, teacher aid, who, whatever. As long as you're working in, in school or at school, come forward and we will recognize you. Do we have? I know Yen Yen, come here Yen. She is, uh, she works in a school. And yes, Rika, come. Catherine. Okay, who else? Do we have any more graduates? Can we ask the students quickly to come forward so we can pray for them? <laughs> okay. I have a word for you guys, okay? It's in um, Proverbs 16:3. It says there, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Amen. Okay, when you work when you work or when you study, kids listen, when you study, you're not just studying. Have that mindset that I'm going to study, do my best because I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. Commit your work to the Lord and your plan will succeed. Pastor, I'm going to ask you to pray for it. Lord God, again, we pray, Lord, that um, again, as they have graduated, it is also, Lord God, a, uh, a start, Lord God, for their next steps. So I pray, Lord God, that along the way, we know that everything is a preparation moving toward eternity. So I pray, Lord God, that they are going, Lord, to pursue your purpose, Lord God, for their lives as they pursue you and your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And of course, we have prepared a gift for you. You can go to Sister, uh, to Jomar. <laughs> Thank you, graduates. Thank you, teachers. That to remind you that God has a plan for each and every one of you. Okay, so as um, the gifts are being handed out to our graduates and also to our teachers, we have some announcements. Thank, once again, thank you, church, for worshiping with us. And of course, Coach Jake and our pastor, okay, I'm gonna go here, <laughs> for a wonderful message that, of course, our prayer is not only to become hearers, but be doers of the word. Amen. And, of course, we're going to see you next week. Always have that mindset to bring, to invite and bring someone with you so that it's not only you who will be blessed. It's going to be your friend, your family. Okay, we'll see you again next week. Okay, last year we started our faith-based campaign called the Building Blocks. You've heard about this uh, uh, in the testimony of Jomar and Mara. People pledged and signed a block costing one thousand each. This year we will cap off our campaign this July. So for those who, of you who have pledged, you can send it to our Lightcast Zell and put on the memo. Don't forget the memo. It's for the building blocks. And I believe, Pastor, that's why the poster was uh, crushed down <laughs> or thrown away. You know why? Because church, God wants us to raise that faith higher. If you have signed one, why don't you do two? Why don't you donate three blocks, four blocks? Because God wants to invite you to experience how He marvelously provides for your life. Here in Lightcast, we believe that training is our... So, of course, training this afternoon resume or continues live class at 1.30ish and then 12.30ish and then 12, as soon as we finish lunch, we do live class and then right after live class, we will learn how to lead, lead through our destiny training. And third, we, are, uh, we have our prayer done at 5 a.m. Tuesday to Friday via Zoom. And if you want to join, um, ask me, ask, or ask Pastor, or ask some that person who invited you, or ask your cell leader for the link. Lastly, cell groups. 
Church is not a building, but it's actually building lives together. So all cell groups, they have their own schedule. Uh, they meet. We encourage all cell groups to meet in person, okay? And then have your regular schedule once a week, okay? So again, church, are you blessed today? Let's all stand. Once again, I'm going to call our pastor to close us in prayer. The July 9th. Yeah, um, but we're not so nice now. All right. Um, July 9, we are going to have a mini festival in front of the church, right? So um, that's also going to be our baptism. For those who are not baptized yet and you want to be baptized, or some of you actually indicated that you were baptized before, but uh, you know, that, um, and, and you're thinking that. Um, you haven't really understood it that during the time. So we are going to have a, fest, a mini festival. There's going to be games. Uh, we are introducing our church. There's going to be barbecue, right? So that's going to be July 9th, the whole day, right? So we're still figuring out. We might not have our worship service here, but we are going to actually serve the community on that Sunday, July 9th, right? So that's Sunday. It was supposed to be July 8th. But then there are like uh, conflicting uh, schedules for those who are going to be baptized. So we are putting it in July 9. Crossroad Community Church in Jersey City are going to join us on that Sunday. All right. So what's the day? July 9. What day? Sunday. All right. So don't come right wearing these clothes, right? Because you might get wet. All right. So uh, wear comfortable clothes and we are going to minister to those who are outside. Let's clo close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. For indeed, Lord God, we want, Lord God, again, to exhibit the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. We want, Lord, to, to again, Lord God, to exalt Christ, Lord God. We want to expand, Lord God, your kingdom. And we want, Lord God, to exterminate, Lord God, the territories of the enemy, Lord God. We want to invade, Lord God, homes, Lord, campuses, Lord God, um, marketplace, Lord, wherever you are going to lead us. Oh, Lord God, use us mightily. And as we launch, Lord God, our MMKP, Lord God, today, and Lord God, as we try, Lord God, to set goals, be with us. We don't want to listen, Lord God, to our scared, Lord God, hearts, but rather we want, Lord God, to come to you and listen to your command. Be courageous. Right? Take courage. Lord God, do not be afraid, for I, the Lord God, am with you. So, Lord God, we are about to charge the gates of hell again. So we pray again, Lord God, for your protection. We pray, Lord God, for your provision. We pray, Lord God, for your presence. And again, Lord God, today we are assured that we have your promise, your yes and your amen. In the Lord Jesus Christ and now unto He who is able to do beyond what we ask or even imagine. According to your power that is at work within us. And again, Lord God, in your... Uh, all glory be, Lord God, in, in Christ and in your church throughout all generations, now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. Church! Ang ina. Hindi matatakot yung mga ninja sa inyo. All right, church! Takutin nyo ako. All right, one more time. Church! Church!